Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, I hope you're having a great day in Jesus. This is the Schofield Study Bible 3 from Oxford University Press, put out King James Version. So the first one was 1909, and really the second one was 1917. But then what they call the new Schofield came out around 1967. So this is what's known as the Schofield Study Bible 3. This is bonded leather, thumb index. You can get these fairly reasonably on eBay in the used market in really good shape. Now I may do a comparison. I've got a Schofield by Church Bible Publishers here, but probably won't do it today. So let's take a look on the inside here. This is the 2002 edition. Of course, they came out with it in the New King James. They've got it in several now. Um, and we may also look at different Schofield conspiracy theories and how the editorship of the Schofield kind of disproves those. Has the beautiful, I like the blue and gold headbands, tailbands. Has a gorgeous gold ribbon marker. It matches the gold. This is a thumb indexed edition. The thumb indexing turned out really good. He even has little raised spine hubs in here. Well, I got this one really inexpensive off eBay. I thank the Lord for that. I've seen them advertised for like $20 more. But this one was just fine. So we open it, and the first few pages um, is, uh, wow, it's pretty interesting. It, you know, real thick pages, and then the Centennial of the Schofield Bible, 2009 has all kinds of things so then we so that's kind of like an insert now it gets to bible paper oxford university press new york printed in korea which is where the defined king james bible is printed by the bible for today it says the schofield study bible king james version copyright 2003 now here's what the consulting editors 1909 1917 edition and then the editorial revision committee of 1967 by e schuyler english i want to show you that because you know there's this cottage industry of schofield study bibles that it was a zionist conspiracy done by theodore herzl at the world zionist congress 1897 that they picked schofield who was a drunk out of the hat and had him do a study bible that said that israel was going to be restored now of several things that kind of militate against that and I'm not saying a hundred percent that's totally wrong but I've never I've seen a lot and read a lot on that subject even by great investigative journalists who I really like and appreciate and I've never seen the evidence a lot of leaps of logic a lot of well he was enrolled in the same gym as a guy that worked for you know that was a wealthy uh, Zionist and it's like huh well that just proves it right there doesn't it it's like you know so something that would militate against it is you're going to have to say that Barrett, C.R. Erdman William J. Erdman Arno C. Gablin James Gray Elmore Hare, some of these names I'm not acquainted with, W.G. Moorhead, William Pettingale, Professor Margoloth, Arthur T. Pearson, Professor Sace, Walter Scott, and Henry G. Weston were all in on it as well because they were all consulting editors. And if they were like, you know, Schofield, the Bible nowhere says Israel's going to be gathered in the nation again. They, they could have done that. They did not do that. 
So it tells you a little plan of the, uh, the Bible. The central theme of the Bible is Christ. Also, I don't think our Pentecostal elders would have been that deceived for having this as their main study Bible for 50 years plus. Now, one thing you notice about this particular edition of the Schofield Study System, notice it's no longer Schofield Study Bible, Schofield Study System, is it has a lot, a lot more in the introduction than the old one. Gorgeous ribbon marker, by the way. The gold just sets off with this gilt edging. It's not art gilt edging, but it is gilt edging. So we'll point out some differences here. You know, the new Schofield changes very few words into modern English, but a lot of people still don't like the new Schofield because they feel like it went too far changing the King James. And there's some people that consider the new Schofield reference Bible actually a different translation than the King James. They would say it makes so many substantive changes, it's actually a different translation. I've got that on the list to do a video on that. We'll see if we ever get to that. So, of course, dispensationalism. A lot of people say that started with John Nelson Darby. Eh. But the print is absolutely beautiful. And it's side reference, not uh, center reference. It looks almost like a computerized print. And what's good is very little ghosting. And then the spacing of the letters and the spacing of the lines are just perfect. But you can see the amount of information in this particular Bible. It is an enormous amount of information. So it's very readable, even though it may only be like 8.5 print or 9 print, I'm not really sure. It's an immensely readable print. And so it's bigger than a regular Schofield unless you get the large print and the wide margin of Schofield, but it's going to have more information in here as well. Second dispensation. I like how the text of the Bible is darker than the uh, uh, commentary at the bottom. Kind of lets you see the preeminence of Scripture. It does have in-text headers which I really like in many instances as well. I'm going to try to get my print size measure here. It's definitely not 10. You know, it looks like 9, just right on. The side's not going to be uh, that. It does have, with the side column references, one of the advantages of that is it has um, a lot of room to write where there's no references. So like it is right at an inch on the side. It is right at 0.375 at the top. It is an inch on the left side in the gutter as well. And it looks like it is, wow, it looks like 0.6 inches at the bottom. So that almost qualifies for a large print, almost. And so a lot of notes, you know, the regular Schofield just doesn't have a lot of notes in it. Bible prayers of the Old Testament summary, that's good. Let's see if it's got anything in between the Old and the New Testament. And it does. Just one page, but I'm sure it's a very helpful page as well. A lot of people, a lot of times they'll buy a study Bible, and so many of the study helps will be in between Malachi and Matthew, and they won't even realize that they have uh, missed so many of their study notes. So, you know, good little thing, and then get you right into Matthew. Actually, it's a deal on the four Gospels. Incomplete story, complete revelation. I even like how that is phrased. 
um, a very good red letter. It's very bright. It reminds me of a Cambridge red letter. Now I'm going to assume this is the Oxford King James. I don't think it is the NRSB. I could be wrong about that. The new Schofield Reference Bible translation. I, I don't think it is. So that being the case, it is going to have at least three differences from the regular King James. At least three differences. Justification summary. So this would have been, you know, this harkens back to your JT pews and Aertians and all this. Let's see if it's red letter in the last. Uh, yeah, and it's actually red letter in the last part of Revelation. A lot of times Cambridge only does red letter while Jesus was alive on earth, it's called. So then in Revelation, when he's in heaven, it's not red letter. And you can also see what's at the back. You're going to have quite a bit at the back. Excellent Bible paper. This is just a home run. Um, I'm surprised it's not as good of a seller as I would suspect. It could be. Um, let's just see here. It's, so it's about 1948 pages and of the study helps. The study helps start on 1687. So let's see, that's 113. 113 to 1800 148 so that is 261 pages of study helps in the back you can see how the concordance is set up again very well spread out this is bonded leather excellent you can tell it's it's tough you know a lot of people are into just like your goat skins and all that but your bonded leathers a lot of times are tough and you can tell this is a tough bonded leather which means they don't get scratched up real easy and, and things such as that And actually what I just showed you, I think is the subject index. Let me double check on that. I thought I read it was a concordance. Oh, it's the index of proper names. So then what was that? Oh, it's that's the subject index. Okay, subject index, there it is. And then a complete index to the subject chain references, which is phenomenal. It's like you can look up New Covenant and it's got chain references. The Oxford chain references are really good, by the way. So here's what the concordance looks like. I apologize for that. And then we'll show you the maps and measure this thing. Good size to carry. Very well done. The box is great. I'm not totally sure this is still in print. I noticed, you know, it had the uh, century uh, anniversary. So this is 2009. So here's the maps. And I think there was nine maps. Yeah, nine maps. And they're just your basic Oxford maps. Those of you who watched some Bible reviews, we apologize we're not able to put the Bible reviews in our playlist any longer. It's because we do our children's Sunday school online and um, YouTube just doesn't allow that. And that's okay. We play by YouTube's rules. We're just appreciative YouTube allows us to spread the, the gospel and the truths of Jesus Christ on their platform free of charge. So that's pretty good. We are very grateful for that. Try to pray for the folks at YouTube on a regular basis. God bless and help them. But uh, boy, just good in pages. Good bonded leather. Oh, and let's just see here too, if we can get a feel for if it's still pretty conservative in its notes. Uh, background. Let's see if it's author structure and order 
Certain critics have denied that Moses wrote Genesis to Deuteronomy despite the fact they were attributed to Moses by the Lord Jesus Christ. The arguments against Moses' authorship are chief, chiefly based on the variation of the names of God, Elohim, and Jehovah. See the note on Malachi 3.18, the difference in the style and vocabulary, the presence of more than one account of the same event, for example, the creation of man in Genesis. These contentions have been adequately answered in that the variation of divine names is for the purpose of revealing certain aspects of God's uh, character, all that. So that is that is an excellent, that is a very conservative viewpoint. Even the date of writing 1450 to 1410, even though that is not Usher, that is still a very conservative viewpoint. So let's see, it's about nine and a half inches tall. It's, it's just a good sized Bible. It's not a thin line or anything like that, but it's a good carrying Bible, good print size. I think I may have moved too fast. Sorry about that. This is how wide it is. So this is the Schofield Study System 3, red letter indexed. And except for like who it's from in the beginning, you know, there's a page that's written on, it's pretty much mint. It's about 1.9 inches thick. But it compares favorably, I would say, to a Ryrie study Bible. Doesn't have much of a yap at all. You'd want to break this Bible in so the pages didn't fall out. No doubt about it. So you'd want to just take every few pages and do like that. And that really increases the life of the Bible. You never want to leave it out in the sun. So just a, really a major home run. And I can see how it's uh, positioning the Schofield to compete with modern Bibles that have so much more information. Oh, and I was going to measure, let's do this and tell you, the uh, ribbon marker. Let's see if we can do this. The ribbon marker is... Wow, it is almost four inches long. So it's a long ribbon marker, but it's not a thick one. It's a good size. So the Schofield Study Bible 3. God bless. Talk with you later in Jesus' name.